Hi, it's Marcus. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to cram and still get those top grades. This is useful for anyone who doesn't really have much time to study for a particular test, or for those of you who procrastinate a lot and then realize that you have just a few hours to study for the test, which is on the next day and you haven't really done any real revision. So if you are someone who procrastinates a lot and leaves things typically to the day before, then this video is definitely for you, because it will show you how you can cram for a test or an exam and still get an A or a 7 in the IB. Now, the tips I'm giving you here are definitely not the best way to study for tests or exams, and they don't lead to long-term memory retention. If you are interested in something that is more in-depth about how to study more effectively, I would check out my video on how to study and how I study for tests. I'm in no way endorsing cramming because I do believe that it is not a great solution. However, if you are short on time, then it is the only way to make sure that you keep those grades and sometimes you just don't have the choice. So I'm making this video to really help you make the most out of the limited hours that you have to study. So let's dive right into it. My first tip is to scope the subject before you start to study. Now what this includes is going over the syllabus and creating a mental or even physical mind map of everything that is included in the topic. What this does is it makes you aware of everything you're gonna be tested on and helps you subconsciously think about the subject matter and boost your memory without you even knowing it. An effective way of scoping the subject is to draw a physical mind map of everything you need to know because it helps you visualize the topic as a whole. So scoping the subject can be extremely quick and I would recommend spending from 5 to 15 minutes just going through the syllabus and making sure you're aware and you know exactly what you need to know. So my second tip is try to understand the main concepts. Tests and exams will have the bulk of their marks in long answer questions or questions which you need to explain things. And these questions typically require an understanding of the topic. If you understand the base concepts, then answering these questions will be far easier and you don't really need to memorize much. Tests are also made so that if you understand the basics and you understand the main concepts, then you are given enough marks to actually pass the test. Now this isn't the ultimate goal and getting those higher 70, 80 or 90 percent is what you can potentially aim for using this cramming technique. However, understanding the key concepts is really important to get that solid foundation of at least 50% in the test. I would suggest doing this by creating more mind maps, however, in much more detail, perhaps with chunks of text or bullet points in them, or diagrams as visual aids. You can also make simple quick notes if that helps you. However, these typically aren't as organized and as visually helpful as the mind maps can be. My third tip is to not focus on the details. As I said before, the big bulk of your marks will come from the explanations and the long answer questions. And trying to memorize everything that might come out is only something that you should do if you want to get 100% and if you have the time to actually go through and memorize every single little detail that you need to know. However, with cramming, you just don't have that time. And your goal with cramming is to try to maximize the amount of marks you can get in the smallest amount of study time possible. So I wouldn't suggest going and trying to memorize everything that you need to know because that's just not time efficient and you won't get that much out of it in terms of marks. This being said, you should still be aware of the sort of questions and small things that they can ask you because if you are aware of these things, then you can relate it to the big concepts and this will make answering and guessing these smaller questions far easier because you can make educated guesses and be far more likely of getting them right without having to actually go and memorize the answers. This sort of stuff normally appears in multiple choice questions and if you scope the subject beforehand then you are already familiar with the content matter and you can make a guess that is likely to be right even if you don't really know the answer. So my fourth tip is to not make everything so pretty. I see so many people making incredible aesthetic notes and amazing revision booklets and YouTubers showing you how to make the perfect set of notes. In reality, this just isn't practical and you have to spend a lot of time and you're not really getting that much out of it. When you're cramming, you're trying to save time. I would say try to make notes and aids, which are sort of scrappy and quick, but also legible and organized and coherent so you can still visualize things and actually read them. If you're cramming for the test, chances are that you aren't going to be using these notes more than once. So it's okay if they're not perfect because you only need to use them for this test and then you can just throw them away. If you are going to be making notes, which you will use further on in exams and stuff, 
then by all means take the time to create the perfect set of notes and make it visually pleasing so that you actually enjoy studying. But this does take a lot of time and I would suggest doing this outside of the time that you need to really cram a subject because if you only have a few hours to study for a subject, then that is definitely not the best way to spend that time. So my fifth tip for cramming is to do everything by hand. Now this is a bit strange because doing things on the computer can be much more organized and everything can sort of flow together better. However, it is scientifically proven that doing things by hand will increase your memory retention. And effectively, that's what you're trying to do. You're just trying to put as much information into your memory in as short of a time as possible. And using the computer for this just isn't as effective. When making mind maps or notes or the equivalent, use a pencil and paper. You will benefit greatly from this. So my sixth tip I call pseudo practice. Now this is similar to the practice segment of the how to study for tests video. However, it does have a twist. When you're cramming, you don't have the time to be going through a million questions and answering things out in detail. Instead, I would recommend opening past papers and opening past paper questions on your computer and reading through the questions. When reading through a question, you ask yourself two different questions. Firstly, you ask yourself, how would you answer this question? You can physically answer it either by writing down a couple of bullet points or by mentally going over the question and thinking, okay, I would say this, this, and this. This is so that you know the content and you are using active recall to make sure that it is in your head. The second question that you need to ask yourself is the most important. That is, is there anything related to this question which I don't know? So if I'm doing a maths paper and they give me a differentiation question, I have to ask myself, do I know exactly how to use all of the different rules of differentiation? Do I know how to use the chain rule, the product rule, the quotient rule? This is really important for cramming because firstly, it tests your knowledge on how all the different parts of the topic you're studying fit together and how different subsections relate. It tests how much you are aware of the topic and how familiar you are of the content within it. And finally, it allows you to seek out any gaps in your knowledge without you having to go through a million different questions to find the questions that will expose what you don't know. This can all be done in the matter of 30 seconds for a three mark question. And so it is extremely time efficient because you can cover a huge amount of content in a very short space of time. And that is ultimately what you need to cram something. So my tip seven is basically the same as the reflection part of my how I study for tests technique where you have to write down anything that you really don't know on a separate piece of paper when doing your pseudo practice. Anything that you are mostly familiar with and you are comfortable in answering, then I would say not writing down. This is in contrast to my other video where I say anything that you aren't 100% sure about, you would write down. Because with cramming, you don't need to be 100% sure about everything because that just takes far too long and you don't have the time for that. The things that you really don't know, however, you do need to look back into. So I would say write them down on a piece of paper and look in the book. Close the book and think to yourself, okay, what did I just read? And try to explain it in your own words. Then you move on to the next question of your pseudo practice. This is really important because it makes sure you don't go into a test and you're just completely clueless about something and you sit there wondering, hmm, yeah. Then after going through as many past paper questions as you have time for, I would suggest looking back at the sheet and going over those questions again and going over the bullet points you made on that sheet. Here, you would try to think about the things from memory and anything you don't know, you put a star next to and you go look up in the book. And again, you close the book after reading it and try to explain it in your own words and repeat the process until you are confident that you are familiar and you understand everything that is on that sheet. This sheet then becomes important for the next day, which leads me onto my final tip, which is use last minute reminders. Take that sheet and go through the different parts half an hour or 45 minutes before the test. Think about the things that you know and the things you don't know and anything that you don't know, look it up quickly and make sure that you remind yourself and that again, you explain it in your own words after you close the book. Now using last minute reminders can be a very bad thing to do because it can just stress you out and essentially make you really worried because you don't really know anything. However, having crammed the day before, hopefully you have avoided this. So using last minute reminders is very important because you've only really studied for that test the day before. And 
that means that everything the day before would just cram into your short term memory, which means your memory retention will dip a lot in the first day. Then using this last minute reminder allows your brain to remind itself of everything that you studied before and really boost your memory retention. You can do this by looking through the sheet or discussing things with your friends, which I find to be really effective because often they ask you questions which you don't know and you realize that you've missed something out. And you can try teaching things to your friends, you can try testing your friends, you can get them to test you. And that's something really, really useful because it does take in the signs of active recall to make sure that you know everything when you get into the test. So using these eight tips, you should be able to cram for a test in just two or three hours, really effective, intensive study. And you might still be able to get those really high A's because this does work. And although it doesn't have the long-term benefits you might see with proper study techniques, this really helps you short term and really allows you to get those grades which you might need in the short term. I would not recommend some of these tips for subjects and tests which you just need to memorize for, such as tests of just multiple choice like anatomy tests or things like that. Because with that, you basically just need to memorize everything and looking at the key concepts and creating mind maps just isn't that useful. So for that type of test, I would just create a deck on Anki and just basically cram a bunch of cards until I know it all by heart. And by a few days later, I probably will have already forgotten everything, but for the test, I would just have memorized everything and that's the way it is. Now, it is possible to get high grades using this strategy, although I wouldn't recommend it for the long term because it's just not effective for long term memory retention. So I hope you found value in this video. And if you have, please consider subscribing and dropping a like. It really does help me out and it is free. If you are interested in other videos, I would suggest the how to study for tests video if you haven't already watched it, since it is highly related to this one. And I feel it is really, really so useful. That's all from me. me. And there's no stopping it now. There's no facing the heat. Can't fight it. I'm driving. Now I'm down on my knees.